Hello everybody. Given this time of the year, let's create another effect, a fireworks effect, as you're seeing on screen. So just like our snow effect, we will create a modifier that will add this effect to any view. Let's begin by creating a new file. We'll create here our fireworks modifier. So it's not going to be a view, it's going to be a view modifier. Now let's create one variable for the number of fireworks that we are going to be displaying on top of the view. As I mentioned, the fireworks will be displayed on top of the view. So for that, we use an overlay. Now in the overlay, what we're going to present is a fireworks view. Inside of this view is where we will create the fireworks effect. So this view also has the number of fireworks. The fireworks will display them on a C stack. And we will have several states for this view. So one will be the exposition of each of the fireworks. Likely we need a Y position. And if you remember the video at the beginning, we don't want the fireworks to be of just one color. So we'll create an array of colors. In the initializer is where we will give values to our uh, arrays that represent the state of this view. And since these are fireworks, we want them to be random. So the Y and X positions we will have a random between 0 and 0.5. Since then we will multiply this by the width and the height of the view. For the colors, we'll just have an array of colors and we will select a random value from this array for each position. For now, our fireworks will just be circles. We fill it with the color that corresponds to that index. And now, how do we position this firework in the view? Well, we need a geometry reader for that to know the, well, the coordinate space. And now with the geometry size, we can multiply by the percentage in the X and Y position arrays and then place it. the size is going to be five percent of the width let's try and see how this looks to position the firework in the coordinate space we use offset otherwise all of the circles will appear just on the center one on top of the other
Now let's look at the preview. And oh, our reviews are all displayed. Now this happens because we haven't given our C stack is not occupying the entire space. We can fix this by creating a rectangle with clear color and fill. This will make it so that the C stack expand to all of its available space that is provided by the overlay. Now on to the next step. What we want now is to have an effect that will move our firework up. So just like a firework, when it's fired, we move the circle up, it will stop there. Then we will do the exploding animation that will come later. But first, let's do this translation effect. Our translation effect will be carried over by a geometry effect. In geometry effect, we can keep track of the animation by creating a percent variable and then Geometry effect has this animatable data that we can um, declare the setter and getter using our percent. Then in the initializer, we use a Boolean value to change the value of this percent and Swift UI will update percent during the animation, which will allow us to keep track of the progress of the animation. We also need the height in the initializer since the effect is not going to depend on the size of the firework, but on the view that it is containing it. First thing that we need to do in the effect value is check if the animation hasn't completed. So that is if the percent is 0% or 100%. If it is, we return a projection transform with the identity. We will divide our animation into two halves. On the first half, which is going to be 50% of the duration of the animation, the firework will travel upwards until it reaches the totality of the height. After that, during the second stage, the firework will remain on that same position, where we later on will be executing the exploding animation. With our geometry effect ready, now we need to add it to our fireworks view. Keep in mind that this geometry effect depends on a boolean which we're going to change. So we have a new state. It is animating in our fireworks view. And the boolean will be used by, the same boolean will be used by each firework. We don't want our fireworks to start animating immediately, so we will use we will change the value of the boolean on appear after two seconds using this patch queue async capture. Since we are doing an animation, we need to use the animation modifier. Let's do it with linear. And in iOS 15 animation also depends on a value. We will use the same boolean flag we have been using for the geometry effect. see our animation in the preview. Oh, it's going to, oh, it's going downwards here. Yeah, I'm using the wrong uh, sign. Let's change the height to negative and run again. So two seconds pass. And so see the animation there? The fireworks were moving upwards, then they stopped. Now let's do a repeat forever. And yeah, let's remove the auto reverse. That's why it's going upwards and then downwards. We just want it to go up, stay there, and then just snap immediately to the bottom. Okay, now our fireworks are moving as we want to. However, if you notice here, this animation doesn't look natural for fireworks. You do not fire all of the fireworks at the same time. We want them to move sequentially, one after the other. So now our is animating flag will transform into an array of flags which we will also initialize in the initializer, the size being the number of fireworks. And then we will trigger this 
flags one by one using dispatch after and making the delay for each one be longer than the previous one. Let's see here. Oh, that's better. That looks more like fireworks. See how they are firing each other at different time. Now that we have the translation, we need to move on to the explosion, the animation. How are we going to animate this? Let's look at the shape. So if we go to the declaration in Swift UI, we can see that shape conforms to animatable meaning that just like we did in Geometry Effect, we can keep track of the animatable data and perform animations in shape. So let's create our firework shape. In our Geometry Effect, we're using percent of the animatable data. Let's change the name here to offset. Remember how we were using a Boolean in our geometry effect? Here will be the same. If we are animating, the offset is going to be the total distance. If not, it will be zero. Now let's use these animatable data, the offset, in the method that creates the shape, path. So when the firework is not exploding, our shape will just be a normal circle. We do this by adding an ellipse to the path. And let's apply a scale. Since we don't want the circle to be that big. Now when we are exploding, what we want is to create eight different circles and they will have an offset into different directions uh, of the center. So for this we create an ellipse in a rect that's inset by the offset in different variations of the x and y axis. We can skip over this but basically we're just creating uh, different circles on the diagonals and on top below to the left and to the right. Let's apply now our shape. So instead of a circle, we create a firework. Let's see how this looks. I start going up. Oh, and oh, wow. Well, first of all, one of the problems is you can see that as they are going up, they are exploding. We can prevent this by adding a delay to the animation. Since we want this to explode once it gets up, we know that's half of the animation, so we can apply a delay of half of the duration. Let's see it now on the preview. Okay, we now fix it. The explosion is occurring when the 
fireworks that gets to the top. So that's good. Now let's fix this explosion, which is actually not doing the effect that we want. Oh yeah, I'm using the wrong method in the rig. It's not inset by, it's offset by. Sorry about that. Let's see now our new preview. Ah, huh, there we have it. That's our firework animation. With that, our modifier is ready. Let's add it to some views in our app. So let's add it to the canvas. Let's also add it to the continue button. We'll remove the snow effect in this one. And okay, we do have our fireworks effect. There's a little bit of lag because of the amount of fireworks we're adding. And also something that is not very neat about our effect is if you notice when we start, we can see the fireworks in their stale position. We should fix that. Let's add an opacity where if we are not doing the animation, the opacity is going to be zero. And when we are animating, the opacity is one. That way we do not show our fireworks before they start animating. So let's see now we don't see the fireworks at the beginning and then we have our firework animation. Much better. And that was all for today. As you could see, the fact that shape is animatable worked in our favor. We could create very cool animations like this explosion in the firework just by keeping track of a CG float and modifying a path. It wasn't that hard to make. Hope you liked this video and had a lot of fun. Bye.